The amazing world of gumball has been tossed around in the comments section lately, so obviously I have to check it out. We're going to be taking a look at and learning more about some of the strange and crazy medical type situations from the show. Now for full disclosure, I've never seen the amazing world of gumball before, but of course I had to do my research for myself and for those who might not be as familiar with the show either. Contrary to its title, this show isn't about gum. Gumball is an animated series on the Cartoon Network that follows the adventures of a blue cat and his friends and their everyday shenanigans. But before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doctor. If you enjoy the educational react videos and other stuff that you see here on this channel, smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way, you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Say no more, my friend. We'll perform the operation and we'll save your mother. No, I meant you could just go down the corridor and find another surgeon. Oh, no. Seriously, there's medically qualified professionals <laughs> all over. Shh. Okay. Oh, my God. You shouldn't be just like forcing somebody to get knocked out. Don't know what kind of gas this is. Nice. Nice EKG or ECG. Any ideas? Try this. Biology. Actually, if you go behind closed doors, every doctor's office has textbooks available. But nowadays you have your electronic devices that you can look things up if you actually need to. Your brain's full of it, you know where to look it up, you know what it is. Sometimes doctors need a little bit of a refresher. Ah, balloons. There, flatulum transplant. What is a flatulum transplant? Flatus is a medical term for farts and passing gas, so it could be part of that. Hey, look to your right. Nope. What can you see? <laughs> Nothing. This guy's full of air. The end of the balloon where you blow an air in, they had it clamped off, which you definitely use different clamps. We use different tools to clamp things. Pretty funny. Uh, no. <laughs> the heart. It's all invisible. How are we supposed to do this operation? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. He's pushing air everywhere. Oh. Gonna lose them. <laughs> it's like a whoopee cushion. So you got CPR, right? Staying alive, staying alive, chest compressions, that sort of thing. <laughs> there you go. I think the anesthetic's worn off. How can you tell? My insides are boring. <laughs> <morning. laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a little ridiculous, but it's kind of funny. The technique at the end, uh, basically like sticking your finger in the hole to stop it or a hole in the heart, literally just plug it up. That is actually a medical technique that we would do. And then obviously you gotta figure out what to do from there. Okay, let me see. <laughs> 110. 110 degrees? She's burning up! For humans, where you would check for a temperature is mouth or rectal, which is the best because it's core temperature. Our normal temperature should be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or for everybody else, it's 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, hmm. Whoa, the, left, the eye's not working. Hmm. Well, as a medical oh. practitioner, I don't like the sound of this at all. Doctor, please, can you tell us what's wrong with her? Yes, allow me to demonstrate. Could one of you do something stupid? I got it! <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't get electrocuted that way, by the way. The pads for defibrillation, the, the energy goes between the two of them. You won't get shocked. Don't go trying it. It shouldn't work that way. It should have a safety mechanism built in. I think if the button was pushed and it malfunctioned, a lot of other people in that area would probably get electrocuted. <sighs> Just as I suspected. Uh. Your daughter's been face palming at your stupidity for so long. <laughs> this is horrible. Take a look at this x-ray. What? <gasps> there will be serious consequences for her brain if she face palms. Face palming. Assume this is a standard Watterson brain. If the face palming continues in six months, she'll go from a Nicole to a gumball. So face palming isn't a thing. Now, if you smack your head hard enough multiple, multiple times, then yes, you potentially can cause some concussions, contusions to the brain, unlikely bleeding. You're not gonna have a handprint on your brain and pretty hard to break your skull. So the symptoms are a weird empty sensation in my stomach, a feeling of lightheadedness and an unusual amount of saliva in my mouth when I think of food. So if you actually think about food, actually it's a neurostimulant to increase salivation and actually get your gastric juices flowing so you can actually be ready for digestion. Because you actually digest first starting in your mouth to start breaking down with the enzymes and things like that and then it gets down into your stomach where it breaks down even further i checked on the internet and apparently it might be something called the g virus and the patient looks up stuff on the internet which is fine but what ends up happening is usually you find the worst case scenario and most of the time it is not the worst case scenario which can only be cured by cutting off the infected part or the removal of the brain hmm 
Hmm, I'm going to prescribe two weeks off and a couple of heavy sedatives a day for six weeks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> two weeks off and heavy sedatives. If somebody has anxiety, which you think, okay, somebody's kind of worked up and they're manifesting their symptoms. Yes, it's fine to diagnose anxiety, but first our job is to rule out things that are tangible that you can identify that is causing the problem. And then if everything is normal, we may give something to relax the patient that might help with the anxiety and the symptoms might go away. Hi, Dora can't stop speaking. I was here first. I was just about just to a second. medication. <laughs> That's funny. Can I help you? <laughs> Right. Sounds like a simple allergy. Just hold it in and get back to class. Oh, it's a school nurse. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> you should never hold in a sneeze. It's very dangerous. You could pop a blood vessel or even worse. Is she right? What she is is a pain in the neck who makes my job a nightmare. <laughs> Did you know that a sneeze can travel at 100 miles an hour? It's a reflex that's irritating your upper respiratory tract. Yes, it's okay to get it out, but you don't want to spray it on other people. Alternative medicines are often ridiculed for being a bunch of magic baloney practiced by a gang of almost criminal bozos. Depends on what they are. Depends if it's a technique. It depends if it's medications. It all depends on what the therapy is. But look at me. You can tell right away it is no laughing matter. Yeah, it's definitely a bit sad. So the plan is to clean your energy by absorbing the toxins with the power of this unbreakable crystal. The power of these two unbreakable <laughs> crystals. <laughs> Crystals could potentially work. If you believe something is going to work to make you better, more often than not, you will get better. The power of the mind is an amazing tool. I think I tried. Oh, cool. Oh, no. Don't worry, I've got a diploma in the ancient art of acupuncture. I've actually used acupuncture myself. I was even trained as a physician to do what's called microneedling, where you end up using a small needle to put into an area where there's angry tissue or hypertonic muscles, muscle spasm. Because if you can hit the area that is hypertonic or very tense, it can actually cause it to spasm and then relax. Well, on a pain scale of 1 to 10, this looks like it would score at least, uh... Somebody please finish me off every single Oh time. my gosh. Your agony. Don't worry, acupuncture is completely painless. No, so acupuncture is not completely painless. You're getting a needle stuck in your skin. So acupuncture is specifically put into certain areas that help stimulate the nervous system and then potentially will release chemicals into the body, which then will go into different tissues and cells and nervous system and muscles to help ease discomfort. But you wouldn't put them all over the head like this. But hey, at least it worked. You haven't sneezed for a whole- <laughs> That is awesome. That's dangerous. Blood from one person injecting it to another. Gotta be careful with communicable diseases like that. Ah, my Rocky finally became a man. <laughs> oh, Mr. Robinson, happening. what's wrong? I was trying to shed a tear of happiness, but I think my heart's too dry. <laughs> You can have dehydration and not tears, but it's typically not related to your heart. This is more of an emotional thing. But the only problem is he's so busy now that he can't come right away. But don't worry, we'll take care of you until he arrives. Day and night. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> ah, we need to call the doctor! What, what, what was that? It all came out of his nose. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be depicting, but now they're gonna be messing with all the equipment. What is it? I don't know, we're trying them all. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, definitely don't mess with hospital equipment if you don't know what you're doing. You can push wrong buttons, give medication, set off alarms. Make sure you contact somebody before you do any of that stuff. What happened to this man? He looks like an empty sausage. He needs a stuffing transfusion stunt. Oh my gosh. I love all the healthcare providers or band-aids. It's really funny. Rocky, quick! Your dad needs a steady stuff fusion track! What happened? No time to explain. We're going to the hospital. <sighs> It's a brave boy you got there, Mr. Robinson. He gave a lot. It was nothing. You made Oh no! Out, son. He gave his dad his stomach contents or his insides or whatever it is. That can translate into humans by like kidney transplant. We have two kidneys. To be able to give somebody an organ, you have to be a comparable match to them and make sure that it won't be rejected and then the organ just die and then something happens to the patient as well. So kind of accurate. It's kind of cool. I've never seen some cartoon like this before, but I love the, the medical depictions that they have here and kind of making stuff up. Do you have a favorite TV show or movie that features medical situations that you want me to teach you more about and react? to let me know which show or episodes in the comments below or if i missed any amazing world of gumball scenes that i should check out for another video as always make sure you subscribe if you want to see more fun videos like this one and check out my educational doctor reaction series right here to catch up on all the reviews of your favorite shows thank you so much for watching and stay healthy my friends <laughs>